I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. First time passing through, please like, subscribe and share. S existing subscribers, thank you for supporting me, your comments and all sorts and your messages and your requests for information. Thank you very much. I can't always oblige, but I do try to when I can. Anyway, I got I don't know how I got this video, but anyway, I'm going to share it with you and then I'm just going to talk a little bit about it. It's not very loud actually, so I'll put the link in the, um, in the, what you call it, down below. They're not talking yet, it's just got writing, but they will talk in a minute. Call logs, chats, cookies, device notifications, emails, instant messages, passwords. You can see deleted conversations on encrypted apps like WhatsApp and Signal. Millie's deleted web browsing history. Hopefully nothing too <laughs> embarrassing. Contact information for everyone she's spoken to, the locations of all her calls. And you can see other people's phone numbers. Um, so it's got more can you there. see their messages to you? Yeah. So the Huge. police are getting information about people that you've contacted who exactly. have nothing to do with the arrest and what happened. Exactly, and who have, who have, may have contacted me securely about work using Signal. I think the most worrying is that this can happen on arrest, even when charges are never even brought. It can also happen to witnesses and to victims. There seems to be nothing clear in terms of deletion, so it seems like the police can effectively do what they want when they obtain your phone. It's a scary amount of information. It's also so useful for the police. This is going to be so important in investigation. Of course. The trouble is, at the moment, you don't need a warrant to obtain any of this. There has to be a degree of involvement of checks and balances that says, well, do you know what, in this case, it's not necessary or proportionate. You don't need this person's phone. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go to work. So I'm just going to read through this quickly what I picked up about it um, and as usual anytime I'm rushing I always get it bloody wrong don't I but anyway you know me by now so you know my limitations from what that they're not okay um, as we know police can extract data from our phones even if we're not the suspect of a crime according to privacy international since 2012 police have been downloading data from suspects victims and witnesses often without seeking information once in police custody this information can be stored indefinitely even when no charges are brought they are apparently downloading the following information from phones, not only of the suspect, but messages from their contacts. Article support, this is from rightsinfo.org. And it's called, the title is called, Police Can Download All Your Smartphone Data Without a Warrant. 2013, Big Brother Watch reported, report states 93% of the police force are extracting data from digital devices. According to the Freedom of Information request to 47 police forces, 55% confirmed that they are using the mobile phone extraction technology. And if you put that in your search engine, you'll come up with the information. And it's not only serious crimes, but low level offences and there is nothing you can do about it. According to Millie Graham Wood, which is the lady on that video I just showed you, she's a solicitor at Privacy International. And this device is what the police are using to extract data from people's phones. No warrant, even if you have not convicted a crime. And it was published last year, but it's still relevant. So that machine that I don't even know what it looks like, that's what it does. It um, extracts call logs, WhatsApp, even though it's encrypted, they can still read it. it all the chats, device notifications, cookies, emails, deleted conversations on, on, in, on encrypted apps. So it does even that. Contact information, location of calls, other people's phone numbers, their messages to you, information about people who have called you, third party information that has nothing to do with the arrest. So it can extract literally everything from your phone. I'm going to tell you the only way it can't 
in a minute. Um, it's called data mining, if you want to look that up, M-I-N-I-N-G. Sky News website said that if rape victims may have their cases dropped against their attackers, if they do not allow the police to have access to their phone, images, messages, social media and accounts and chats. Well, I think that is really bad because, number one, they take your phone, they can keep it up to a month or six months and um, there's nothing you can do about it. And what they're saying to rape victims is that if you don't give us your phone, we're going to drop the case. Now, I don't see why um, rape victims, if they've got their head screwed on, they could actually screenshot their messages or, you know, do put them um, kind of, um, there's a way that you can actually cut and paste them into another document. I mean, it should still have the time and stuff like that. But, you know, you ne really need to, re you don't want to, kind of hinder the investigation but at the same token you don't want to give away your phone the only problem is is that they have um regulation of investigatory law or something that says if you don't give up your phone if it's requested by a court you can do two years in prison which that's not worth doing either. So hopefully you haven't got... The thing is, regardless of whether you've got anything on your phone that's incriminating or not, it's kind of personal, isn't it? It's just like the odd little things you do and the lot, lot odd little things you say, even though it doesn't mean anything to anybody else. It's it's you. It's your life. It's your, it's, it's your personal stuff. And the little kind of idiosyncrasies or some people have fetishes. We don't know what people do. But if they have it on their phone, you know, they can be judged by that. You know, they have some people, they call people up and they say, oh, can you send me a picture of your tits? Can you send me a picture of you naked? Can you send me a picture of you in a bikini? Can you send me a picture of this? I mean, you get people, especially online people who are dating online, they're always doing that, asking for naked photographs and whatever. And so if they're on their phones, what is, what is that going to look like if the old Bill gets hold of your phone and, you know, sees that kind of thing? You're not going to look very credible. You're going to look like some kind of, um, I don't even know what they'll label you as. But the police can be judgmental and anything can make you look like a suspect. And in a rape case, that would be even worse can you imagine a rape victim? She might have innocently been establishing relationships online. She might have been exchanging photographs. She might have been doing anything. And then, yes, you, you know, police will say, oh, well, if you're doing this, what do you expect? If you're sending naked photographs, what do you expect? You're bound to be raped. So she's going to be judged immediately if she's got those kind of photographs on her phone. So... Um, that's what I mean. When you've got stuff on your phone, you better be careful what you're doing with your phone. That's one thing I, would, I wouldn't dream of doing because whoosh, nobody ain't going to see me on no bloody um, phone and the next thing you know it's on bloody Facebook and all over the bloody world. I don't think so. Anyway, um, digital strip shirt, that's, that's what they're calling it, a digital strip search. They literally um, strip all the data on your phone and but what they're saying is that you can screenshot it save all the files screenshot the messages forward emails or texts uh, sent by the rapist and send them all to the police instead of giving up your phone and then they have crime investigation versus intelligence gathering crime investigation is if we allow the police to say if you don't give us your phone, your crime can't be investigated because that's not investigating a crime, but they can take the crime and it's more reactive than it is proactive crime investigation, whereas investigation gathering is proactive and that's letting them have photos, texts, emails that can link them to the perpetrator and which is a much more healthy approach. Apparently, they've been downloading data from tens of thousands of devices each year. Um, I would imagine 97% of it is worthless, but I guess if they get 3%, they will think it's worthwhile jeopardising privacy for. Secure SIM, that is a company, is meant to be a UK leader in encrypted GSM networks, giving complete anonymity 
no cell site, no call logs, no location. I guess it's a bit like VPN, but it costs £1,000 a year or £600 for six months. How many people can afford that? I guess if you're a big company, you might be able to, but it's a hell of a lot of money just to, you know, just to make sure that nobody can look in your phone. I think you, that now you just have to use your phone and just pretend that the world is watching and the world is um, send messages and whatever you do on the phone, behave as though the world is watching every single message you write, every single email you like, you write. You know, sometimes because I do these videos, I get concerned because I, I, I send, I, you know, I'm going on really, um, I don't even know what kind of websites, but suspect websites, you know, to get information. And, you know, they don't know what I'm doing. They might think, oh, my, you know, she looks a bit suspect. She's going on this website. She's going on that website. She's looking at that YouTube video. But sometimes you have to look at them in order to do these videos. So, you know, if they was going to track all my cookies and goodness knows what, without them knowing what I do, I could look like one of these people that they're looking for. But, um, yeah, so, but even then, you know, to get one of these encrypted sims, I, I just can't be asked. I don't, I think if they know what you, I'm doing, you know, it would justify why I visit certain sites from when I don't. But, you know, that's all I'd have to hope. Um, if you want to report a crime, extract the information from your phone and take the information only to the police if you want to report it. So rather than have your phone taken away, if you do see a crime and you want to report it and you've taken the photograph on your phone, you can always um, print it off or take it to one of these shops where they print it off and any other information you can get that printed off so you don't have to give your phone you leave your phone and you say to the police this is what I have and this is all I have so you don't have to worry about your phone being stripped um, provocative messages to loved ones can be misconstrued I've already more or less said that and could affect your credibility and integrity Access to a SIM card could mean that they have information on your life. I already said that. Data extraction is the act of pros is the act of retrieving data on your mobile phone for further data processing or data storage. So they have data extraction and data mining. Data mining is the practice of examining large pre-existing databases in order to generate new information. So one is for retrieving data, that's data extraction, that's what the police do with that machine. And um, data mining is more or less like the um, investigation part, it's examining large information. Um, I would like that lady said, there's no warrant required. Article 8 is supposed to protect your rights, but it's not absolute. It can be contradicted because, um, as you know, um, it, when it comes to security and investigating a crime, your rights don't matter. So... Hmm, digital data extraction should be reviewed says Privacy International, which is a company looking into this. Warrants should be required because, you know, when they search your house, they need a warrant. So when they search your phone, which is like your house, really, is personal to you, they should also need a warrant for that. But they're getting by without one. We have to help the police, but when they abuse our rights to privacy and take information on third parties, that's not right. Deleted messages can be retrieved. So the thing is, is that, you know, you can't even say that they want to take your phone straight away because they're afraid of you deleting messages because they can retrieve deleted messages. So I don't know why they want to take your phone there and then. And I think, you know, with your phone, I mean, you might need to phone someone. You know what I mean? It just leaves you so vulnerable. Some people wait six months to get their phone back. Extraction of data should be based on reasonable suspicion. It's easy just to take information on everybody's phone you have a suspicion about, but there should be boundaries. 
innocent people can be affected. Um, according to www.zdnet, zdnet.com in 2014, this is quite a long time ago, says phones can be remotely wiped by police. So you don't want to trust the police. You can, and what they're saying is you can actually remotely wipe your phone. You know, there's something, I think on some phones it says find my phone and it gives you the option that if you lose your phone, you can wipe your phone and you can do that remotely. So technically, if the police take your phone, you could wipe it. And so they don't get the information, but it could be perceived as interfering with evidence. And so you could be prosecuted. So um, it could hamper investigations. FBI, NSA claim that encryption and find my phone delete data is um, hampering investigations. Um, and the police say that delete data threatens investigations, drug dealers, paedophiles, human traffickers, identity theft, violent criminals. And they reckon that by deleting the information on your phone, you're, you're, they're avoiding capture. Under new surveillance laws, Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act, failing, failing to hand over your encryption key to, a smart, to smartphone owners, e.g. your password, the court can force you to hand over your encryption key or you can face up to two years. Um, what else? Interfering with data that could help with investigation could get you prosecuted. UK has uncodified constitution which precludes the British public from US style laws such as protection against self-incrimination and unwarranted searches and seizures. I'm going to put the sources down below. Um, yeah. So if you do want to wipe your phone uh, on the Samsung, you go to Backup OneDrive Contact, um, also Google Backup, go to find my phone. If my phone is taken, if you're quickly enough, you log on and wipe the phone. It does mean losing everything unless it's kind of been backed up to cloud. And make sure you have your phone is set for the wipe command. I couldn't find that on my phone, but... Um, yeah, I'd, I don't know. I don't know which is worse, wiping off your phone or um, getting prosecuted for tampering with evidence. Like I said, you know, I think 97% of people haven't got nothing of any consequence on their phone. And um, hopefully you're one of them. And that's all for now. Bye bye.